hello, hello, beautiful people. If it isn't another XFM Friday, love it. Um, series one, episode thirteen. I believe there will be more Carlness. Just as there is gradually more, there should be. I mean, math should suggest that there's going to be more Carl than ever. <laughs> I know that's not how it works, but in my mind, it is. Also, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's somebody freaking using a jackhammer or something. Uh, they've been fixing I don't know what for the last four days. And um, it's funny, because today, all day, nothing, nada, silence for hours. It's almost 5 p.m. my time. Nothing. And as I sit down and set everything up, that's when they started again. So it's been exhausting. It's been from 9 to like 7 p.m.-ish, just nonstop drilling and breaking. I don't know what, how, I, I don't know if they're drilling to the center of the earth or what, because they've been drilling for three days nonstop. I mean, you imagine there'd be, at some point, they would get to where they're trying to go. I don't get it. I don't know what they're doing, because you can't see anything from the window. And also, I don't know where they are, because... Every window in this house points in a different direction, and no matter which window you go to, it sounds like it's right next to you, so I have no idea, but whatever. If you can hear them, I'm sorry. I can't, again, they weren't supposed to be working. Like, I just five minutes ago, they weren't doing anything. But you know what? They've been messing with my scheduling all freaking week, so screw it. Uh, it should be fine. Anyway, hello, I am back. I'm already losing my tan. Sad times. <laughs> I got it. I I wasn't aware. First, I thought it was immune to tans, and then when I got a tan, I since it's my first time like ever, I wasn't aware that they fade and so freaking fast. I thought it was gonna be, I thought it was gonna be like a year thing, a year long thing, and next next summer I would be able to add to it. That's not how that works. Okay, silly me. Also, I'm peeling like a reptile. This is the first time in my life. It's crazy. I've never <laughs> like the other day I took a shower, and um. I have, you know, these little loofah exfoliating thingy-majiggies, and it was just, just slicing it off. It was crazy. I've, I've never experienced that. It's, it's weird. It's, I, it's just, I've seen people peel before, but it's never happened to me, and it's so odd, because it doesn't hurt, it doesn't itch, it doesn't nothing, it just peels. It's so weird. <laughs> anyway, uh, Carl, Ricky, and Steven, let's do this. Sorry, I ramble. But I ramble more when I'm happy and excited, so, I mean... It, it's it's part of, you know, it's like the symptoms of my happiness. <laughs> so, you know what? Deal with it. Anyway, let's do this. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Rusty. Rusty Dog for the video. Thank you again. I am loving these. Star Sailor and Poor Misguided oh. Fool. I was like, what? <laughs> with me, Steve Merchant and... Carl Pilkington. The K-Man, round of applause for K-Man. Yeah. Uh, but no one's uh, announced who you are. Oh my Ricky god, the bug eyes on Steven. Whoever drew that is just... The Steven Merchant on that is amazing. Wow. He's got the... Down. <laughs> Brilliant. Guys, it's XFM 104.9. Saturday afternoon, if you didn't know that. <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned it. That was stupid, really. You must know that by now. Well, we've got some great things coming up. We have indeed. We've got songs and chat and things. We'll also, of course, be um, running through the white van man questions from the sun again, but this time Carl will be answering them. I look forward to that. Yeah. Can we do that fairly soon? Oh. there's some good questions this week. Yeah, um, we will, but um, as I was coming in, there was a, like a bunch of... Um, posh lads, I think university students, trying to get in because they're doing one of those um, uh, scavenger hunts that they have to get points for charity and do stuff. And one of theirs is get on a live radio show. Right. So I sort of, sort cool. of felt sorry for them. So I've inv I said they could come on here just for five minutes. Who are they? Right. Um, they're just... Um, are they toffs? They are sort of like toffs, but they're trendy toffs. They're trendy toffs. Ah. Oh, okay, got it, got it. That's so uh, obviously trendy toss. I don't know yeah. what's that. Is that like L Lady Victoria Hervey? Is she <laughs> no, no, don't let me that. No, they they're both sort of like that. Um, Will of Pop Idol. Right, right, right. They're like, right, they're right, like right. him, sort of like trendy but posh. Okay. They seem nice enough, and they're doing it. They're just for uh, a cancer charity, and um, uh, they just get they got for what is it like? They got their sponsor to do very exactly. Shows, I don't know quite how it works, but they're gonna they're gonna come on and um, because we get the, for coming on this live radio show, they get seventeen thousand points. Right, good. If I can put that in context, yep. if they were to say, did it help deliver a baby, they'd only get 7,250 points. <laughs> but it's much easier. It sounds like the point system 
love and freaking whose line is it anyway? <laughs> Welcome to the show where the points don't matter. <laughs> just like every once in a while, Drew Carey is like 10 million points. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. It is. There's, yeah. lo there's lots of women just happily dropping sprogs posh posh all posh. over the place. Oh. You can't get on a live radio show exactly. these days for exactly. love no money. That's true enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, when are they coming in? Uh, uh, Carl what, said they're going to just... One thirty. I had a word with them. Okay, what did and, you make um, of them? They are posh. Really? But um, they said they're going to wander about and go and see if they can deliver a baby and that. And then come back here for one thirty. Was that real? And, oh my god. Uh, I don't know if you can, how, how I hope points. they don't like it, leave a be baby sort of half out, you know, if they've, uh, they've got it, you know, they uh, No, wait, because, oh my god, can you imagine being a woman in labor and having a bunch of toffs coming and, and wanting to help to get a ridiculous amount of points for something? What? Like, no, get the hell out. God, who would... Um, Unless, like, a woman is out because they had to put her out. <laughs> God. Because something happened. I mean, I, I don't see a woman in labor say, oh, yes, come in, come in, please. The more, the merrier. God, jeez. Push, push, sorry, we're going to have to shoot off. We've got to yeah, go see we've, we've got to play an instrument in a marching band for 8,500 <laughs> points. Well, I did say be here definitely at 1.30 because I don't want you getting in the way of the white van questions. Oh, sure. the other thing sure. is, right, they get seven... Thousand uh, five hundred points for delivering a baby, but they get <laughs> nine thousand points if they cut Peter Stringfellow's hair. Well, he's you know he's, he's very precious about his hair. It's a more delicate operation, <laughs> isn't it? There's more Wait, that's the, precious is, about is his hair. Is that hair on on the on the on the top? Is is that photoshopped or AI generated? The hair? what's what's going? It it looks like spaghetti on the top or. Feathers? What is that? That's that's not hair. Either the image is extremely corrupted, because you can kind of tell on the side as well. Oh, you guys have it smaller than I do, but I mean, what what is that? I I, I can tell it's it's not natural and it's added, but what? <laughs> what? There were uh, just there were so many ways. Also, his earrings like a little man. Interesting. It's a more delicate operation, <laughs> isn't it? There's more that can go wrong. That's true enough. Take an unconventional animal for a walk in a park. What an is an unconventional, unconventional animal? I think that could be a dog a that <laughs> just doesn't play by the rules. Yeah, that's a dog that's into Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, that, he's, that, that he wheeze in a urinal. Yeah, exactly. Standing up. Exactly. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward well, to yeah, that. Well, yeah, I'm sure they're lovely guys. Good luck to them. Yeah, we'll see you later. <laughs> also, let me just, because I can already smell the comments. I said a fish. Yes. I can imagine, okay, a goldfish in a little goldfish bowl on a skateboard with a leash or a string and somebody pulling the skateboard. So that would be taking a fish for a walk, okay? Use your mind. Creativity. Creative. Unconditional. Unconditional. Unconventional animals for a walk, okay? I thought it through. I'm not, I wasn't just a dolphin. I, I thought it through, okay? I had a picture in my mind. Nirvana. Man who sold the world. Carl's all confused because it didn't tell you it was ended, did it? What is that then? Is that a sort of glitch in the computer? Just applause, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know, they might start swearing. You know what they're like? Yeah. Rock, star rock stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Their blue language. Yeah, and all their uh, habits. And oh. all that. Yeah, like it says track ending now. So Stop late, talking about it. That's, that's that you're giving away all the secrets of radio and that. People think it's like an old piece of vinyl that we've put on a needle, you know, like those old bits of footage of Tony Blackburn. That's what they think it's like. They don't realise there's computers doing it all. Yeah. Rick, you're, you're showing them behind the curtain. Never do that. I won't. I Never won't do that, mate. Um, in the week, uh, I called Carl up. I said, "How are you, mate? You went not too bad." Uh, now, as you know, his girlfriend's been away for um, ages, hasn't she? Covering yeah. the World Cup, the uh, African, African Nations. Nations Cup. She's a sports journalist. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I love the fact you're thinking, what does that mean? Like, well, she's not much of a journalist, Rick, to be honest. Oh. I've read some of her stuff. No, but she's not on air. She does stuff, you know. Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. A lot of journalists do. You, you, you always want to make clear that you're not going out with Kate Aidy. That's what you want to make clear, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, so she she's seen none of the the meteoric rise of Carl as right, a broadcaster. She's been away for the whole time. A raconteur, sort of become, yeah. a wit, yeah. um, a cult figure, oh, to be right. honest. And he hadn't he hadn't told her this. So uh, <laughs> uh, 
apparently he went home and she was sitting there, looking a bit grumpy, he went, alright, so yeah. She went, should we go out then? He went, she went, I'm not sure I want to go out with an idiot. Right? Oh, no! Yeah. Because, oh, and she went, no. Loch Ness Monster, why don't you just think, of course the Loch Ness Monster lives in Loch Ness. They, and they're she's still on a bit of a hard time. And she went, that's why I don't, he said, that's why I, I didn't tell her. I, you know, I didn't tell her really. Same thing happened when I was at school and I had to play drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> I didn't tell my parents, right? <laughs> But my dad turned up anyway, and what happened? He, um... How old were you, Carl? Well, it was, it was the school that I used to go to. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah! So oh, then, oh, yeah! You, went, well, you used to go to the school you used to go to? <laughs> no, but what I mean go is, on. I didn't go to secondary, did I? So I missed a lot of that. Sure. But primary, I liked. Oh, It was okay. all colouring in and stuff. Yep. And, um, <laughs> it was a Christmas play, and I managed to get a part in it, and, um, Did you audition? No. Um... Got a part in it, and I should have been playing the drums to uh, the one about kings. The three, we three kings. Yeah, yeah. I was meant to, meant to be doing that, but little donkey came on, and it was one of the. What do you mean came on? That it came was, like, on next up on, took on, his on you know job. The, the, the next song. Right, right. And it's one of them songs that you can't help sort of tap it along to. Yeah, do you know like um like if I if I was to go um. Yeah, you'd have to finish it with. Yeah. Do you know that they actually send that into space? Do they? And... What, hoping that aliens will respond with that? Yeah. They do do that. Because apparently it's, it, it is one of the things that you can't help. <laughs> what, even if you're an alien life What are we, Roger yeah. Rabbit? They, they know that, do they? Yeah. But anyway... What, can they watch Star Trek or something? <laughs> Hello. Knock, knock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Who's your truth like? Was that said? Carl up? <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Who is it true? Like, if you say no, knock, knock into yeah. space, yeah, they have to say no. Zwoah! Oggy, oggy, oggy! Zwoah! Ah, that is, this, that is you great. You know what's hilarious, too? Because I, I've been watching, I actually finished it already, I've been watching the Orville, and I've seen some, some scenes of all the different Star Treks and stuff, but it was never really my thing. But the Orville I liked because it, it has the comedy aspect of Seth MacFarlane, so it, it, it was fun enough for me to get hooked, and I actually watched it all. But one thing that bothers me so much, well, a lot of things bother me in that, but one thing is that every alien, every, everywhere speaks English. All of them. All the freaking galaxies, all the everything, everybody. Everybody. And they and they kind of, like, play with, oh, yeah, but on Earth we have this saying, blah, blah, dude, you're speaking the same language, same accent, same everything. Also, as if, like, French doesn't exist, Chinese, no, it's English. Earth speaks English? All of Earth? Okay, fine. But at, like, the entire universe, and there's only maybe three characters that don't, but, 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 when they speak, everybody understands them perfectly and replies in English and the thing that doesn't speak English understands perfectly so like <laughs> that just frustrates the bejesus out of me I understand that it would be very 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 difficult to make a show where you know you actually pay attention to oh wait <laughs> not everyone's gonna speak English but oh my god oh my god man and there's so many communication things that are just the a the aliens would have no way of knowing the knock knock, <laughs> but in that show they do that kind of stuff. I mean, but sure, sure. Hey, seriously. Oh, it, hold on. What's something out there? Was it a little green fellow? <laughs> that is great. So anyway, that is little fantastic. donkey. Little donkey is like one of them tunes that you can't. And I was there, and he had the drumstick, and I thought, oh god. The I, drumstick. I could feel myself. And anyway, just wanted to do it. Yeah. I started going along and playing little donkey, which I wasn't meant to do, but it went down such a storm. <laughs> Well, there are people like parents and that dozing off, and then suddenly they heard your version of Little Donkey. They thought, wait a minute, now it's really picking up. What do you mean? It I'm went glad down? we paid a pound fifty for this. What do you mean it went down such a storm? I'm going, hold on, is it, was it like when people Ringo was in the air? It like when Ringo joined the Beatles, now going, yeah. boo, Pete Best, but he went. Yeah, and like, they went, whoa! whoa. <laughs> oh god! But the teacher just said, oh, it went down really well. You can do that again tonight. Right. When you're in it again. But anyway, so my dad was there. And, um, and you hadn't told him about this performance, I love how he's not famous. So he just did, turned up I off his own back. I never took the lighters home and stuff to no. you know, show me mum and dad, because it just put me off. <laughs> so, um, anyway, he turned up, don't know why, he must have heard from someone else's dad. Yeah. He turned up, mm -hmm. and, um, 
he, he swore about me, which did I, he? I, I don't. Can you what, could you could you, you use a, a word? Is that allowed to be said? The word. Of course it is. Right. If you if you got a kid in the car or anything, you can turn it down now. Oh, yeah. Right. But he said. Oh wait, hold on. Um, it, there was a guy stood next to him with a camera, big video camera, filming it, and he said, "Yeah, film it, but try and avoid getting the twat in the hat." in the shot, because I had one of those porters, you know, the little round pork pie hats on. <laughs> right. This is so what, sad. What, was this a nativity play? <laughs> it was about Jesus and stuff. Yeah, well, there was a porter there helping with his bags. Of course there was, I forgot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mary and what, Joseph, they the got there. Yeah, yeah, because sure. they, they you know, they, they, the inn was full, yes. but I think the porter doubled up with the inn and the stable. Right, that was nice. So he, yeah. He yeah. carry bags over, yeah. Yeah, no, so, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right, though. I don't know why I was wearing one of them, but I was. And, um, sure. and your father said that. And how did you know your father said that? Did he you told hear me it? about it later? Oh, he told you about it later. Yeah, I was talking about stuff I'd done at school, and he said, "Oh God, remember that." Uh, and he, I spoke to him the other day about it. Right. And uh, yeah, oh God. Shame. So that was been? that was the end of your sort of drumming career, really, because it could have been. Yeah. I mean, you know, the audience loved it the night before. Yeah. <laughs> you could have like been like, who knows, a whole new world for you. Yeah. I've never done any stuff. I never drummed. I've never done any whole new world for you. Yeah. I've never done any. Stuff. I never drummed. I've never drummed. I wish I had. Man. I wish but I had. Uh, that is that is that's uh, a movie story. But is that and that's why you don't and you don't tell you still your mum and dad don't know you on the no, radio, do they? they? Think when they were down the other weekend, they had to come in. And I just said, oh, I'll just go in and press the buttons. Because they could listen on Sky Digital, couldn't they? They could do. But you wouldn't want that, would you? I, I don't want that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Play Carl. a record. I want to talk to you again a little bit about this later. Yeah. Right. That's funny. Princess Superstar, Bad Babysitter, first played on this show by Steve Merchant, by Bad Steve Merchant. That's true. By enough. by Steve Scratch Merchant. That's I mean, I, I still like that, but the videos put me off it a little bit because it's just it makes it into the novelty record. It always had the potential of being. Do you I know agree. What I, mean? I agree. Although I, I was never a big fan of Baby Bad Babysitter was not uh, my my favourite from the album. Sure. Uh, sure. If people want my interest and my views on hip hop, then they can always email in Rick, of course. Or, or call you at home. Just give, <laughs> give me a ring at home, there's no problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. Or I'll just pop out and you know, hang with them in yeah. the hood. Yeah, sure, you know, sure, so, sure. Um, yeah. Now it's time for White Van Man. White Van Man. Aww. Oh, um, <laughs> I like yes, it's those that don't buy the sun, they think it's beneath them. Um, <laughs> White Van Man is a column they have, I think, every day, actually, and they just get sort of some, you know, Joe Public to kind of comment sure. on the week's news. It just seems to me, uh, you know, that it might be interesting to, uh, to get Carl's views yeah. on some of the big not, events. Not because we, not because we think that Carl hasn't got a valid sort of viewpoint. No. Because Carl sees the world differently to some people, true. that's all, and that's, that's what's true. interesting. You know, like an artist does, or a... Exactly. Yeah, he's a, very bohemian in his outlook. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you feel that you're up to scratch on this week's news? I don't like this, but... Don't you? Don't, just for he didn't want the little toffee kids to come in what, and not ruin this segment. Now I, I thought he was actually liking it, and now he's like, nope. Why not? Don't you? Don't just relax. Why not? It's pressure. No, 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 because you just have to give us your first opinions. For your honest answer, that's all we've ever asked of you, Carl, and it's all you've ever given us. Your honest, your first from the heart of you, yeah? All Don't right. worry, just relax. Don't just chill are you worried that people are listening and thinking you're an idiot? If my girlfriend's listening now, don't have a Wash or something. Go and have what? a wash. <laughs> 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 nice, isn't it? It's the opposite of Napoleon and Josephine. <laughs> yeah, go on. Go on. If, if you're going to visit me again, Josephine, for Christ's sake, wash. Well, I'll ease yeah. you in with something fairly easy, a, a music based question. Um, Kylie Minogue versus Dido as Queen of the Brits. What's your view there? Um, <laughs> go and have a wash. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, <laughs> what does it really matter? <laughs> with the Brits. I was watching it the other night, and um, I think Kylie will be a good-looking old woman. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Okay. Oh. Do you know? Do you ever do oh. that sort of I want to, Steve. I want to celebrate with you. Have you guys seen that Pamela Anderson now in the last year or so, two years? I don't know because I don't really follow those kind of celebrities. But I've seen that. Lately, she shows up to award shows or red carpet events or whatever the hell she's showing up to with absolutely no freaking makeup or maybe just a very natural look. And she's getting criticized beyond belief. Poor freaking woman, just leave her alone. And she doesn't even look bad. She looks good. It's just that she used to wear so much that most people are like, oh my God, she looks hideous. I don't even recognize her. Dude, she's just let her live her life. What's wrong with it? Again, she doesn't even look bad or anything, but she's getting, there are people that obviously applaud her and cool, cool, good for her, which good for her. 
is my opinion. But I mean, she's getting they tear. They're trying to tear her down, and it's just. All she's doing is not wearing as much makeup as she used to when she was young. So it's so weird. But um, I thought that was interesting. I saw that a couple times. And she's so happy to finally, you know, have the confidence to go out like that. And people are trying to trash it. And that just makes you think, man. Jesus, why, why do people care? Every time he opens his mouth, doesn't matter. I want us to open a bottle Sorry, of champagne. What? Oh, so I want to, Steve. I want to celebrate with you. Every time he opens his mouth, doesn't matter. I want us to open a bottle of champagne. I know what you mean. Do you know uh, what I mean? It's yeah. like we did that. Yes. No, do you, you, know, you have to do that though. Look at people and another person who springs to mind, Jenny Powell. I, hmm? I don't think she's that good looking now. I don't know who that is. Who's Jenny Powell? Is she that girl that used to be the, well, the assistant on Wheel of Fortune? Yeah. Yeah. Leslie. yeah. I think she's a bit over the top for a young woman, but when she gets older, I think she'll look. Be a bit of a stunner. So for you, Chloe, you know, whereas you don't feel that about Dido, is that right? She's all right. She's normal. I prefer Kylie's normal. sister to Kylie. She okay. Looks, you know, she. I can imagine they look similar. Being hard work to live with. And Who, Kylie? Do we do we not have a picture of Dido now? Should I look one up, or are we gonna have one? Because now I'm curious. Hold on. Did she age well? I haven't heard anything about her from forever. Uh, 2000. I'll put 23 because 24 is. There isn't enough time. No way this is her now. Is this really her now? She looks amazing! No way! Oh, she's doing a tour in 2024 if anybody's interested. Dude, she looks fantastic! Carl knows nothing. Pushing up and hard work to live with and... Who Sorry, what? To Kylie. She okay. Looks, you know, she... I can imagine her being a hard work to live with and... Who, Kylie? Not right. being washing up and that. And right. Being, <laughs> being <a bit> <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and what do you make of uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? Well, my dad went to hospital to the have an operation once. Thinks. Yeah. So I feel like... <laughs> It's worth paying it because I've, yeah. I've got some. Because people, because people might go to, have to go to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise. Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. And the weird thing is, if it weren't for me, Dad, I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, yeah. that's yeah. all you need <laughs> to know. Yeah. You, you wouldn't be here, true, but no, but well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I would be here. <laughs> but well, so for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing me dad. In yeah. the hospital, I got a bit bored, <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station, yeah, and got a gig. Really? So, in in a, in a real sense, if it was wait, 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 wait. Okay. Also, yeah, but like, how is how does his dad? That if anybody's you know gets props for that, it's his mom was in the hospital. Uh, okay, but um. Hospital radio station? I'm, I'm confused. Like, is that a thing? The only thing I can think of is, but that's not the same thing, is, you know, the, 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 like, network to communicate with the ambulances and stuff, but, I mean, that radio station sounds very different, so I'm so confused. And how, I need to hear the story. Hold on. I need to stop having opinions and just shut up and listen. I know. Really? So, in, in, a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he, like, sort of tap the nurse and go, can you get that twat off the air? <laughs> <laughs> Who's put him in that app? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, um, what do you make of the real-life Mowgli who's surviving in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this. I do not know how to say that last name. I don't know with the little bullhorns on the A how that's pronounced, but okay. He apparently ran away from, oh, and lived in the wild for, oh my god. At seven? He walked on all fours and growled like a dog. By all reports, he has since attended school and was reported to be a normal kid thereafter. How does a seven-year-old survive for three years? Alone. I'm gonna have to look that up later. Um, 
What do you make of the real life Mowgli who's surviving <coughs> in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this story. I don't you, know. What, you know Mowgli, he's, he's the guy from the one, Jungle Book. Yeah. The little kid that grew up um, with bears and animals and stuff. Apparently, there's a real life one in Transylvania. What, what were the things in Gremlins? <laughs> what were the what? The, in Gremlins, they were. Well, wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is an example. This is what your girlfriend said. Think. What were the things in Gremlins called? I can't remember. Just, I mean, <laughs> really. Like that, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Just really, really think now, Carl. Just with all, with everything you've ever, with all the brain you. power you've ever used, <laughs> think what the things in Gremlins were called. It's not there. There's a clue it's here. It's not there. Oh, no. Yeah. They're not. What? Gremlins. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. Oh, my God. Today I was reading, there, I saw a post of a, a guy that is a, um, a driving, driving instructor. In, a driving instructor. <laughs> and, uh, I guess, I guess he's in the States because he just, makes posts about all the stupid questions kids ask him, you know, when they start learning to drive, which is basically 15, 16. So, I mean, especially after seeing posts like that, these people should not be on the streets. But it's just funny, all the, just the questions. And um, in the comments, there was people sharing the stupid stuff their teenage kids would ask them as parents, you know? And there was one kid that, <laughs> one comment, that there was one kid that asked his mom a couple days ago, <laughs> who was the author of Anne Frank's diary? Like, who wrote it? <laughs> it's just like, um... <laughs> it's, it's the same thing! It's right there! <laughs> Jesus! Oh, my God. Well, we're back, and there's a few more people here. It's <laughs> absolutely well done. Yeah, yeah. Well observed. Yeah. Do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> and what are you doing here? Uh, we're. This is uh, Mark and James, or Sko and Belch, and we're here. Sorry, your names are what? <laughs> Sorry, say the last <laughs> bit again. Or what? Sko, Sko and Belch. Sko and Belch. Yeah, that's right. Do you want to explain that? Um, no. No. <laughs> oh, from the <laughs> drinking story. games, I imagine. Yeah. Oh. We've got worse names than that, but it's radio, so. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> now you're, you're presumably um, students. Uh, we, we've just, we've just, gra well, we kind of graduated, when we've been in work for like about a year or two. And what do you do? Um, I work for a management consultancy. I work for a distribution company up in Birmingham. Well, okay, so now you're, what you're doing is a scavenger hunt and you're raising for um, uh, a cancer um, Colon charity. Cancer research. Right, yeah. and you've got to do, and this is, we're, we're just helping you out here because for 17,000 points, you have to get live on a TV or radio show. That's exactly it. So here we are. That's <laughs> why we're here. Yeah. Do, you, have you, do you ever listen to XFM? Uh, I know of it, yeah. I I listened to it a few times. Sure. What kind of music, what kind of sounds would you normally be into? Uh, oh, I love stuff. cheesy radio, sort of school disco, sort of, you know, 80s right, sure, stuff. Sure, sure. Sorry, what was your name again? Mark, or Sko. Sko, Sko. Okay. <laughs> and you're? Belch. Belch. Um, and what sort of sounds would you be uh, driven to, Belch? Uh, cheesy. UK Garage? Che well, uh, well, Craig David. A, 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 bit of, a bit of house, just very occasionally, sure. a bit of cheese. It depends what kind of mood I'm in, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, now, yeah. You, you don't listen much, but you, you, you I mean, Kiss a celeb because Carl. Yeah, we actually wanted to do that with you, Ricky. Is that mm, right? No, that's not going to happen with Ricky. But you know, Carl. Did he say no? Right? <laughs> Kiss a celeb because Carl. Yeah, we actually wanted to do that with you, Ricky. Is that mm, right? No, that's not, not going to happen okay. with Ricky. But so you know, Carl's now got his name mentioned in Heat magazine. Is that right? Well, so that's you, if brilliant. If you want to snog Carl, we'd love to see that. I mean, we don't want to <laughs> snog Carl, but I mean, we were thinking if there was kind of a female presenter here, we might be able to do something. But um, what are you saying? A female, <laughs> a female presenter. <laughs> Well, if you've got one. Have you seen some of the female presenters that work on XFM? Oh, presenter. Is that why they're on radio? I thought Quite. you said placenta. Um, <laughs> That's uh, unlikely. I know. Um, well, now what's the other things you've got to do here? So what, what's some of the things you've done already? Well, See, we, some of these worry me, like start a fire in Pudding Lane. <coughs> oh, we've for, done that already. For 4,005... What do you mean, start a fire? But... Okay, thank you for that. But I'm I'm still lost a little bit, but it makes sense now. But still, what? <laughs> Seven hundred points. 
Well, I'll tell you what we have done. We've been on, we've been on Phantom of the Opera stage already. Have you? Yeah, we, we just asked the stage door guy. And, that wasn't um, during the show, I see. No. And that's right, we ought to, we, he, actually, he actually mentioned that yeah, we shouldn't speak about that too. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, he'll <laughs> get sacked. Stage, well, yeah. sacked. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was really kind to let us on. Um, we've jumped in Trafalgar Square, Warsaw, with doing a sort of Friends impersonation, so that was right. yeah, How many points did you get for that? that? We got 2,000 points for that. We got right. 8,000 points for being on the um, stage at, at Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. And we get double that. We get like 18,000 points, which is almost the maximum for being here right now. Really? So that's yeah, well, absolutely great. I, honestly, I wouldn't worry about the little things. I'd go for the big. The yeah, big that's it. We're here. not. We're, 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 not, we're not interested in the little stuff. Want to go? They must feel so good about themselves that being here with them is like the thing that gets them the most points. <laughs> the big stuff. Yeah. So what are the big ones are, uh, get on stage with S Club 7, that's not going to happen, is it? When have you got till to get, get on stage with S Club 7, that's not going to happen, is it? What well, the big saying? ones are, uh, get on stage with S Club 7, that's not... Get on stage with Les Crop 7. Sure. Not gonna happen, is it? When you've got till till six today. Well, yeah. S Club Seven are on at the London Arena uh, at about two o'clock. So good luck. But okay. we, we, I, I think it's gonna be very very difficult to get on there. But I, I, I know. think so. Yeah, get in the vaults of a bank. Yeah, you see, some ideas? of these some of these are bordering on the illegal. That's right. right? <laughs> <for that. laughs> um, like like getting a cage. What do you mean borders? They started a fire. Isn't that illegal? And also, I mean, getting in a public fountain. Well, I don't know. That depends where you are, but. The fire, that, it sounded illegal to me. I, I'm not up to date on your guys' laws or whatever, especially what they were in 2002, but it just sounded odd to me, but sure. London Zoo, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, like London bordering Zoo? on the illegal, that's 20,000 points for that. <laughs> um, like, like getting a cage at London Zoo, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, it's 10,000 points, but don't do it. And this is a penguin cage. Well, that's mean, what we're hoping. Just some kind of air, timid animal we might be alright with. You know? Yeah, sure. If anyone's got any good ideas for sort of funky things to do on air, then, um... Okay, well, if you, if you, leave, if you leave your number and anyone calls in, they can help you with anything. Well, maybe, maybe some of S Club 7 yeah. are listening. Or if, if, it, it's say, because, I mean, we love if, them to bits. If they are, it, it's, it's for charity, and the, the points get awarded into money for colon cancer research. So, it'd be absolutely fantastic if we okay, could. Okay, remember how I said, um... I was watching the Orville. What I just heard was Kalon cancer research. The Kalons, well, they can't have cancer <laughs> because they are robots. <laughs> so, um, sure. Kalon cancer research. So it would be absolutely fantastic if we could. Yeah, so Bradley, John, Tina, if you're listening. Yeah, if you're listening. <laughs> or any celebrity out there who's a female celebrity, we need to we need to snog them. It doesn't oh, need to be a long song, but if we can, that'd be this great. Is, this is good for 7,000 points. This looks like a good one. Um, play the organ in a church. That must be easy. Is that a metaphor? Yeah, but the, you know what church people like. <laughs> it says the bigger it. the better, <laughs> so it might be. That's got to be euphemism. Yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks very much. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Guys, thanks yeah, thank much. standing outside Le Miz looking Miz. That's going to happen. That's good. <laughs> Man so, a big gun type thing on the HMS Belfast. That well, we've got a big gun, it's just finding the boat, which is the problem. Oh, so. calm down. What was your name? Bo? Poe. Poe. Po. No. Sco. 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 <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. 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 Bye. That was cool of them to let them do that. That's nice. The streets. Although, honestly, especially with all the weird stuff Ricky does to, like, people that work for him, Nigel and Robert Inch, or whatever, Inch, whatever, and always bothering Carl and stuff. He could have accepted a little kissy. <laughs> it's for charity. He's right there. He's a big name, apparently, so. Let's push things forward on XFM 104.9, the home of charity. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. I I've got to slow down because I'm a doing a little bit too much for charity. I've got to... I've got to worry about myself sooner or later. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, come on. We were halfway through uh, White Van Man. We were indeed, yes. Those, those, um, those lads came in. Getting Carl's views on some of the big stories of the week yeah. from the news. Um, Carl, what do you make of the fact that the British Olympic curling team won a gold medal? I watched it. Uh -huh. I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's getting on my nerves now is like... What was that? Is that a trombone player <laughs> just sneaking? That was me moving this microphone. Right. I thought it was incredible, wasn't it? noise. The only thing is... That shouldn't sound like that, should it? That's incredible. What a shoddy tin pot station this is. Well, we know that. Sorry, Carl. Go on. It's like in all the papers now, in, in like the, you know, the Star and the Sun all week, they've been like traipsing models over a bit of granite. 
Do you know like how those things are made out of granite? The um, the things they throw. Oh yeah. And it just that that bit annoys me. Okay. The what, way that, the Daily Star. <laughs> no, the way that you know this sport nobody had ever sort of heard of it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We win a gold mar- medal. Yeah. And now in the papers it's like they've gone crazy. They've gone curling mad. It. Yeah. It's a good game now. Yeah. Good. Okay. Next. All right. Good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neasden? What? Semi-detached house. Oh! I still don't know what that means, but it's not a truck. (laughs) To me, a semi was a truck. Okay, okay, that makes a little bit more sense, but what the hell is a semi-detached house? Is it, like, poorly constructed and it's not completely attached to the floor, or... What is it semi-detached to? I'm... What? Whatever. Uh, it's alright, isn't it? Um, <laughs> something that someone told me in the week is that, do you know all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird they've only just found him, considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> someone... <laughs> oh, someone genius. told me that, um... Uh, do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is... It's called it's, tall. It's something about... You're suffering from tall. You've got a, a small tumour or something just behind this part of your head. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. Get it sorted. Yeah. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is um, just projecting into the future. It's so just projecting into the future <laughs> now, came in. Oh my god, lately I've been stressed out because of life and things, and my mom... My mom is a lady that stresses out about everything, it, to a point where it's exhausting. Anything you can think about, she stresses out over it. Just, if you go out for five seconds and go to the shop to buy some milk or whatever, she's like sitting here in her bed just like oh my god i hope she doesn't get run over by an ambulance or by a train or but like there's no trains around here woman what are you talking about she's just scared of everything everything and everything is always be careful and uh we're talking about a lady that stresses out so much she had a heart attack uh years ago and uh, and she sees me stress how do i deal with my stress i mean i have eczema flare-ups a little bit I maybe listen to music or just, you know, generally just kind of anxious. I don't, I'm not running across the walls or banging my head on the furniture or something. And her advice to me is just calm down. <gasps> How dare you? I mean, excuse me? Do you really think that that's going to work? Like, oh, I should have thought of that. Just don't stress out. Dude, no kidding! I, I just... Okay, so, I don't even, I'm so, that stressed me out, that just got me so freaking mad, I don't even remember why the hell I brought the, oh yeah, I just sorted it out. Like, oh snap, you smart little cookie. Mm. <laughs> just projecting into the future now, Cayman. <laughs> Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain what in the future. Sure. Are you worried about that? Wildlife. Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Is that yeah, a womble? Pretty... Little insect. Soon there. enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um, you don't. You wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time. No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got like deadly snakes. Yes. Yeah. Which are deaf. Did you know snakes are deaf? Snakes are deaf. They don't have ears. Okay. Oh, I too heard death. Okay. Snakes do not have external ears like humans and many other animals do. But they do have a specialized hearing system that allows them to detect vibrations and low-frequency sounds. While they may not hear in the same way humans do, they are not deaf. Learn that from The Simpsons. <laughs> what was it? It was a Groundhog Day, but it was something like that. Smash a snake day. I don't know. Something like that, but... Yes. Um, so... 
you're all right walking about behind them. Yep. But, but if they see you ahead of you, you, you know. you're in trouble. But yeah, with, with places like Australia, you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but they don't talk about the spiders. And they, they don't? The That's all I hear about Australia. So I think we've got a bit of the both, the best world. Too. So you're worried, though, about in the future, the vultures flying through the, the sky, <laughs> very creepy, crawly snakes. Are you concerned about that? Yeah, well, there's a load. I saw something in the news in the week about a load of sparrows. And that right there, that little quote right there, is what inspired the Hannah Montana song. There you go. Very creepy, crawly snakes. Are you concerned yeah. about that? Yeah, well, there's a load. I saw something in the news in the week about a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start. Of it. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> no. Was that from Pedro? Or... <laughs> <laughs> there's a load of sparrows somewhere. No, <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrow somewhere. Some sparrow somewhere. <laughs> sparrow somewhere. <laughs> Loading sparrows somewhere. No. Sparrow somewhere. Oh. <laughs> there you go, anyway. Excellent. That's Thank great. Thank you very that's, much, that's, Carl. Uh, that's, uh, that's Carl um, giving his views on the news. Don't Carl's... do that next week. <laughs> Carl's Why not? I just don't like it. Why? Pressure. It's <laughs> not pressure. You did brilliantly. Yeah. Damn. God, I love him. Pressure. Can you imagine if while he's playing a record, while just kind of telling him off to not do that next week, he was he would start playing under pressure? <laughs> that would have been cute. Profits there on XFM 104.9. Now, I like that. Mm -hmm. It rocks. I like the guitar. Atmosphere. It's good. But it's called the fake sound of progress. I know, I know. What? See, what always annoys me is when people, um, they dismiss, you know, say, Enrique Iglesias, current number one, great song. Good video. Brilliant video. And they say, oh, it's rubbish and all that. But I think that songs with titles like A Fake Sound of Progress, yeah. much more something to get on your hobby horse about. What has happened in that Bad video? lyrics by if, good artists is always worse than, I think, a recording If you're listening, or if you work for the record company, or you worked on that video, because he's got the money and the girl, and then Mickey Rock beats him up, right, he has a fight, you just see him knock him over, and then it cuts, and the next scene, it's night, it's not in the desert. There's loads of um, uh, police cars. They're not doing anything. They're, they're just standing and around. And somehow he's probably eating he's, donuts. He's dying of injuries, but I don't know what happened. They don't. What has happened in that video? I, I think if you heard the 12-inch mix, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other uh, sequences that explain why. Well. Yeah, I mean, we all think, all we think that he stole the girl off Mickey. I Rourke think he stole he... the girl off Mickey Rourke, yeah. as well as some money. Some money, Mi yeah. Mickey's tracked him down. Yeah. And he's thinking, I'm going to stop running. I'm going to face Mickey this time. And he does, and then boom, you're right. It cuts, and suddenly the police have, yeah. have shot him or something. I don't know he's where they are. are. Don't know. What, the police seem to be leaving him to die in the. See, I thought I thought that they'd called the police because the 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 sort of like the melee. Mm. But Mickey Rourke's off with his gang, the police are going, well, you know, where are they? There's no evidence. They go, well, look, he's dying. They're going, but how did he die? Yeah. How is he dying? He's, he's not, he's a bit wet for the no rain. In, no, in Rourke, though, Rick, I imagine he's, uh, stitched Enrique up. I he's framed him or something. Or, or he's, he's, he's no sort of, like, ninja stuff, and there's lots of internal injuries that yeah. aren't immediately Anyone, if you were involved with perhaps the making of that video, or indeed you are Enrique Iglesias, give yeah. us a ring. If there you're you around. go. I absolutely freaking love that they're trying to analyze a music video because I've seen so many that are just, they make no sense and it's just so bizarre. And then maybe you look online to like the deeper, or you see comments about it, oh, this is so profound and this is so deep, like it resembles and they just explain this whole thing and it's like, how the hell did you get that from this video? Like what the hell are you talking about? Uh, or you see an interview of the artist speaking, oh yeah, that that video of me riding a lollipop into the clouds over the sun and um, and then sliding down a rainbow into a pool of just purple color, that resembles the, the sadness I felt when my dad died. And you're like, what? What the? F and it's just ridiculous. And one thing I always freaking laugh about with my best friend, and we still laugh about it to this day, is one time he showed me the music video for Lady Gaga's 911. And then he showed me the video, right? And he, I was cracking up because it's ridiculous. And then he explained all the like deeper meaning behind it and the all the little magic and how deep it is and blah, blah, blah. And the only thing I can think of, if you do not know what that music video is, I just this isn't going to make sense. But there is, for maybe the entirety of the video, they keep clipping back to a guy that is hitting his head as hard as he can on a pillow. He's sitting down and just banging his head on a pillow, right? And that's all symbolic. It was something, something about a car crash or whatever. It doesn't matter. But I just cracked up so hard when I saw that. Because can you imagine 
I guess he was a dancer or whatever, because most extras in music videos are either dancers or actors or whatever. But can you imagine having that guy come into the video and say, okay, for about half an hour, you're just going to sit there and to the beat of the music, you are going to smash your face into the pillow repeatedly. What the hell? Are you kidding me? And the guy's like, oh, yeah, this is going to be brilliant. Like, what the? It's hilarious. I can't imagine the whole just setup of, for the day where you're going to start filming. All right, start, start banging your head. It's just so stupid. <laughs> it cracks me up every time I think about it. Every time I bring it up, he laughs because he never realized how just how stupid that was. But, um, yeah. Good for them for trying, anyway. Come on, just just fill us in. I'd, I need, I'd, um, I'd rather play some adverts now. Than I'd, love, I'd love to play some adverts, Rick, but I'll tell you this: I'd also like to tell the listeners that coming very soon on XFM, some huge news about Carl it is. that will rock It'll the be capital. Like Pope Idol. It's going to be an ongoing saga. What? That's how they ended that. With left me on a cliffhanger. Go, me. Shot, shot. Good track. Good band. But I will tell you what. In the second hour, I just want to play classics. I'd love to hear a bloody I want to play some Cure, New Order, Smith. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Mm, some, mm, you know, we mm, played Nirvana mm, earlier, but it's not enough for me, Steve. No. You need I your fix. I want... <laughs> I do. Well, uh, it's that point in the show now. Song for the Lovers. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favourite singers. Like, what, probably one of the most beautiful singer-songwriters of all time. Well, you don't mean that, like, you don't mean that he's a good-looking bloke and you fancy him. <laughs> I mean, I just want to clear that up, Rick, because otherwise... <laughs> Why not? <laughs> that would, yeah. What you uh, mean is that the songs he writes are beautiful. Yeah. You can take or leave him as a bloke. Can't yeah, of course, of course, yeah. He's and I've got, I've got, and, and he's, he's written, mo he's written such brilliant classics with his lovely ass as. Oh, <laughs> why did I say that? Why did you say, did you say that, that, for? Rick? Because if people will that? listen and misinterpret. Oh God. Um, oh, no. uh, he wrote Galveston. He wrote Wichita Line Man. I he wrote, um, yeah. He wrote MacArthur Park, and just to tickle him down below. What? What? I don't know what. Saying thieves. And this is uh, a song, one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It's off um, a few of them, Ten Easy Pieces, which is just him doing the versions um, of other, you know, that he gave to other people on piano. And this is um, called If These Old Walls Could Speak, and it is absolutely beautiful. Listen to this. Cool. That was beautiful. Thank you. If sure. These Old Walls Could Speak by Jimmy Webb. Might play another track off that later if we've got time. What, today? Yeah, well, maybe, or maybe next week. We've got, no, we've got lots to pack in. We've got things like New Order, Cure. Oh, I'm just the... hoping that um, all those kind of new metal fans, Rick, can just calm down for a second, you know, and, yeah. and, and just enjoy that for what it was. My eyes are rolling because they're still freaking working. Dude, it's late. Go home! Again, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can totally hear that. And I got headphones on, so that means that that's loud, so you can definitely probably hear it. Calm down for a second, you know. Yeah. And, and just enjoy that for what it was. Yeah. Well, well, they're not, know, I hope their snobbery is not going to uh, prevent them from enjoying it. I hope it. they can just leave it alone for two hours for our show. Because exactly. Because we try and, you know, we get try and pack lots of well, stuff Well, whilst you're in. talking about new metal, can I just say Ian Comfield is here tonight. He's moving from Fridays. Right. What the hell does he think he's doing? He's well, just off. I'm sorry, but did he say his last name is Comfield? That is extremely unfortunate. And quite disgusting. How did that how did that last name even come to be? I don't think I wanna know. Oh god. Bring up information now. No, it's just like you were talking about the new Matlers. And now seems like a good time to Carl, say. listen, you're here for our amusement. Yeah. You yeah. don't you don't sort of come in any time you want. When we decide it's time to sort of have some fun at your expense, then we'll let you know. But yeah. Oh my god. This is, we're not here to help other DJs or, or, or even this station. We don't give a about this. See, this is what my girlfriend said. What's that? <laughs> we should listen to her. She knows she what said, she's talking about, just, clearly. Now put your microphone you. down. She said they just wheel you out when they need you. Switch your microphone off, Carl, Smart and let us think what we were saying. <laughs> right, just... What yeah. were we saying, Rick? Um, uh, Ian Canfield has got a rock show. Oh, right, yeah. Starting today. It's four hours of pure oh. rock. Yeah, he's probably here. Smoking, drinking Jack Daniels, and just like having pictures of Vance put up around him to get in the mood. <laughs> then they go out and rock. <laughs> Carl, don't be silly. Turn your microphone on. <laughs> We're joking. It was, uh, it was, is that right? When's he on? 8 till 12 tonight. Four hours of rock. Lovely. <laughs> Listen, um, some big classics coming up. Plus, oh, huge no, no, news some ads. about yeah, Carl. Please, let's play some more ads. You really want some ads? I'm tired of the music and chat. Please play some more ads, Carl. Please. Oh, Carl. Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> on XFM 104.9.
That's what it's all about, Steve. Absolutely classics. Yeah, we've got some more classics coming up. Looking forward to them. Now, when we were talking to Carl in the week, the thing we're talking to Carl is that you come up with something that's sort of like, um, quite innocent, and he goes, ah, well, at once, right? And you realise that it's comedy dynamite. Yeah. He doesn't know it, but we want to go save it. And he let out, um, you were filling in a form, weren't you? It's, it was all about your girlfriend thinking you're a div. And it's happened before, isn't it? Because she came home and you'd filled out a form to get a job once, hadn't you? Yeah. What was that for? Granada well, Telly. And on it... Well, uh, let Carl explain. Yeah. Um, you, you, you see, this is what annoys me with job applications, because rather than just saying, <laughs> do you want the job and what can you bring to this business? Yeah. Do you want yeah, the job yeah. is a good one. Because yeah. the thing is... <laughs> that, 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 that's what I learned from the boys. No, listen, right? Because if they say no, yeah, I don't think they want the job. Yeah, but listen. Go on. I mean, I presume with what you do, you, you have to take people on and stuff. Well, in a fight, you mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's more important that you're willing to graft and put the hours in sure. than say that, you know, you, you did well at school. Yes, sure. Because if I wanted to, I could have done well at school. Of course. Of course. I just, I just didn't want to. Yeah. So where's this going? So you had the application form. So when it came to the qualifications bit and that, I couldn't fill them in because I didn't have any qualifications. And it was also asking about your languages. And I, I put down English quite good. English quite good. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 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 And his girlfriend Brilliant. came home and seen the form that he'd sent off, and this was a copy, copy of it. Yeah. And so she went, oh, you know what I mean? Oh. So that's oh, what started, right. you know, the disappointment. So they're going to get that and think that you're not English? I don't think I've got it. It was ages ago. Right. <laughs> How long ago was it? Oh, well, it was when I was still in Manchester, so f five years ago. I don't think you got it, no. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, no, I think you'd... There yeah. could be a long list. I mean, there, there's probably a lot of admin problems in that organisation, but they, they probably... But what, what I meant by it is that, me Engl you know, I can speak English, but I don't know all these long words that people use all the time. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, can I just tell this quickly? Um, it, in the week, um, I'm talking to you now, the listener. Um, usually I don't. Yeah. Uh, Carl said, oh, I'm about embarrassing him on air and that, and he's worried about his education, and he was worried about not knowing long words. Like, we come up with any long words. Mm. And he said, no, I, I, was, I was scared um, you were going to ask me something about... Um, someone, and he's a uh, Eastern European leader, his surname is Milosevic, and Carl said, so I learnt it this week, and learnt it so you can't catch me out in case you say, I said, what? And he said, he thought about it, and he went, Flobodan Milosevic. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the surname right though, doesn't he? So what's, the his surname, right? what's his name? That's how Bill and Ben would address this leader. <laughs> how would they have said it? Flobodan Milosevic. What's his name? S Slobodan yeah. Milosevic. Yeah. Well done. well done. Anyway, Carl, look, you almost let it slip then as you were talking about your uh, filling out that application form. There's some big news that everyone needs to know, which we were stunned by in the week, although the more we sort of talk to you, the more it starts to fall into place. Yeah. But Carl, what's the story? That I haven't got me, uh, me exam results from my GCSEs. He never turned up to get his exam results. I was working. I was working. <clears throat> well, I never went to get my, um... I, I don't know what you guys would call it, but I studied for four years to be a teacher, and I never went to get the paper that I graduated, and I am officially a teacher. <laughs> because, uh, but not because I was working or whatever. There was an issue with that. I did go. Uh, this, there's so much bu bureaucracy with any kind of paperwork here in this lawless country. And... Um, I had to go pick up my high school papers to get that done, and I haven't had I haven't picked up my high school papers yet because they take more than a year to get done or whatever. Fine, uh huh, sure. And when I went to pick them up, they had um, filled out some stuff wrong, some grades, and it, they just they messed it up. Of course, of course, it took them a year to do, and they messed it up. And I said you mess this up and they're like oh snap we gotta do it again it's gonna take another year so i just never went and picked it up screw it i don't even need it who wants to be a teacher anyway <laughs> i found uh different career options and i'm quite happy with them so oh well so i understand and so this. how many did you take in the end because you weren't even sure about that way you think you took maths and english don't you yeah and you, uh, you think you've handed in the artwork for art, don't now you? art was um, continual assessment, wasn't it? Yeah. Coursework. And what was the that you had you made? I made a man s sort of putting his arms into a car. 
You've, you've made a model of a man putting his arms into a car. What was this? So that like, one's passed. Was that, is that, that this is a homage to break-ins in Manchester? <laughs> was this? <laughs> <laughs> was this? <laughs> oh look, he does what he sees. Yeah. Um, so, so you've got it? that. That's safe. You've so, definitely got that one. So you've taken mm -hmm. art, you've taken English and maths, you think. So this is what we're gonna do, listeners. We're gonna try and find out his exam results for him and tell him next week. Live on air. We're going to call his school, we're going to try and track him down, and we are going to have a little envelope, and we are going to give Carl, at the age of 29, his O-level results. Uh, GCSEs. GCSEs, yeah. Now, Carl, so you took maths, yep. you think, you took English, you took, do you remember turning up to do those? Do you remember sitting in the room filling in the forms? Yeah. Okay, and how did you feel you did? <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I did well. You don't think you did well? Did you revise? No. Why didn't you revise? Because I, I don't really believe in it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just that if you don't know it, then you don't know it. You shouldn't have to start looking at the book. If Did I went to the doc mistakes? If I went to, like, the hospital, yeah. and the doctor said, oh, you need your appendix out, but hang on a minute, I've just got to read up on it. Yeah. That isn't good enough. Okay. He should know, and that's that's the way I feel about it. To be it. fair, though, he did do the revision beforehand. Yeah, they don't usually pass on, uh, like maybe like when they're in practice. Yeah, information they the took line. in by osmosis. Yeah, yeah. And they bloke comes in and goes, "Can I just see what you did with that?" And I goes, "You've passed." Yeah. Phew. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Good job. I watched Casualty. <laughs> I just like the way, you know, the things that interest me I remember. Things okay. like snakes not having ears and stuff. Yes. I didn't have to read about that. No, you just learnt that, yeah. You saw it on the telly, didn't you? You saw yeah. it on that Ian Wright programme. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Carl said to me, he said, uh, only, no, it's actually, um, I, I called Carl up in the week and Reese was with him, you know, Reese used to be on XFM, yeah, and he yeah. took the phone and he went, Carl's worried, I've seen that programme, he said, snakes don't have ears, right? He said, so you can creep up on them and pick them up. And he said, Carl's worried, he said, how'd you ever put them down again? <laughs> Because then they know that you're there. I woke up the other night, quite late. <laughs> Worried about that. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, how do you put a snake down? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, that Ian Wright thing, this guy managed to pick up a snake. And do you know that thing where they clamp its head on a jar to get the poison out? <laughs> I do now. Right? <laughs> they did that, but they didn't show you how they got rid of it. And I thought, it could really get nasty, because it's obviously annoyed that you've had its head pressed in the jar. Yeah. yeah right? They hate that. Now, it's especially lift, as it's in front of their mates. When you lift it off, yeah. right, you've got hold of it. Yeah. If you go to chuck it down, <laughs> it's going to turn on you. It's going to get wild, isn't it? So, I, I just wondered. Well, what you do is you never put it down, Carl. Yeah, that's why, <laughs> that's why that bloke has got about, you know, 11 or 12 just carrying him. Exactly. Yeah, you never put it down. You that's sling scarves. it. Who cares? You just throw it, don't you, really far. <laughs> that's not, that I don't think you should throw snakes. But Carl, listen, don't, don't worry, you don't, we're not asking you to get involved with snakes, we're just asking you now, you did, you, you've, you've, you've done ma maths, you think? Yeah. Did no revision for that? No. Okay. Uh, English, it? do you remember what it was? Did they ask you about Shakespeare? Did they ask you can't about books? I remember, but I must have done it because I thought that was It was the English one. language, not English literature, wasn't it? So it was, was like... Was it spelling and what? So was it, no, was it, was it like a comprehension, you read a passage and had to ask questions on it? Was it, uh, did you have to I write a short essay? I don't know, I can't remember any of that. <laughs> Okay. I did a, I did a science. Okay, did physics it? or chemistry? Physics. All right, well done. And uh, this is all you think? Any you actually took that? You actually took physics, do you say, you think? You're obliged to do a language, I think. Did you do French? I did French for a bit, but... I don't think you are. I don't think you have to do a language. I think you have a GCSE, I think you've got to. Well, it. English quite good. <laughs> I think that's his language he did. I can't, so you don't know about I language. Remember. History? Geography? Just, just what you will find out, won't we? Okay. But you just can't remember. You, I, I, I can't believe you can't remember turning up for these things, because it's quite a big moment in people's lives. It is that, the, it is the thing that you've been working to all of your educational life. On the day that the, the things came out, I was working at a print, as a printer. Okay. And it was a really busy day. A lot of spelling mistakes that it day. It was a really busy day, so you're bound to forget. Yeah, the, the yeah. Terms. No, but I, I, I had to use gold ink that day. Oh, oh. And it's, it, yeah, I mean, you're yeah, not a printer, yeah, yeah. so you don't, you don't know. No, it. no, no, that's the biggie, innit? But it's tough, you've got to really get your rollers clean. <laughs> Carl, play a record, mate, and good luck with the exam results. Hopefully we'll have them for you by next week. I love them so much. PJ Harvey on XFM 104.9. So. No opinion. I'm Home not Home of the either. classics. Absolute classics. Classics. Classics, classics, classics. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Oi, oi, oi. Um, well, we were uh, <laughs> talking earlier about this, um, uh, there's this book, They Died Young, right, and there's all these theories about these people, uh, like famous people that, um, uh, aren't really dead. And I remember speaking to someone about this, okay, and they said to me, <coughs> Bruce Lee is not dead. <laughs> right? They said he's not dead, right? Uh, and I thought I said, well, um, how do you know? I was going, no, 
it was a whole big thing by the Hong Kong government, and he's actually working as an undercover cop in Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I using this. using his his kung fu powers. Now, no, he's apparently he faked his own death, Carl, yeah. so that he could work undercover for the Hong Kong yeah. police, infiltrating gangs, the triads, that sort of thing. Now, my point. I've heard a lot of you know Michael Jackson's still alive. I heard a lot of theories regarding Paul McCartney and Avril Lavigne that they did, they actually did die and then were replaced. A lot of weird stuff, but I've never heard the. The Bruce Lee one. Is this, if you're going to use someone undercover in Hong Kong, right, you know, an undercover cop, I suggest using the most famous Chinaman of all time. That, yeah, that would that's be... that's a guarantee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, nice you know, when he's taking away a gang, they're going, you look a bit like Bruce Lee. He's going, no, no, I don't, no. See this, this moustache? It's a bit wonky. Well, it's, I just, just take my word for it, I'm not Bruce Lee, right? Well, all that stuff he did when you were punching us and kicking us. But maybe that's that's part of the cover. When they recognize, like he's taking down criminals or whatever, and when they recognize him, they're starstruck, and that's when he pounces and arrests them. It's all in the tactics. These guys understand nothing. I mean, that is extremely smart. They're like just running because they stabbed some old lady. I don't know what crime is in China, but um. Or why, what Bruce Lee policemen would be working on undercover. But whatever, let's just say that's the scenario. And they're running and they're running and somebody's running after them. They turn around, they look, and it's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, are you Bruce Lee? And then, boom. Ta-da. Some chop, yes. But, Cohen, I'm not. It does look a bit like the stuff in my film, in, in his films. In his films, yeah. But it's, it's not. It does it's not. just coincidence. No, yeah. The thing is, though, and not sounding bad here, not trying to offend anyone, but they do all look the right. same. They okay. do all look no, the same. No, no, it's no. No, I know. You know, we're having a serious chat. I'm right. Not, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to upset anyone. Right. Okay. And what I'm saying is, over here... I'm so sorry. No, I'm not... That was great, yeah, by the way. You know me. I'm not, I'm not out to upset right. anyone. Right. You're not a racialist? No. What so, do you mean? You, you, are you saying all the people is, all look alike? Well, look, look at the people over here, right? Yeah. With like, you've got no, you've got ginger this... people. Oh, you've got people with black hair. You've got people who are fat. Mm. People who are thin. Mm. But they're all so sort of fit, which is. That's another thing that I'm sorry, but that's another thing that bothers me in the Orville. Every time they encounter a an alien species, unless they're basically humans with just like a little ridge here or a little sticker here or whatever, the ones that don't look like humans. They're all done the same, like the Mocklins and just the Krill. They're all the same. They have nothing to give them any kind of uniqueness whatsoever. And that's just like, again, I get it. Whoa, okay, I lost my pencil. I get it. I get why they do that that way. I, I understand it makes things easier and it flows. I get it, but it still bothers me. I need a pencil. Hold on. Just for reasons. A bad thing. They all do that sort of thing. You've got people who are fat, mm. people who are thin, mm. but they're all so sort of fit, which isn't a bad thing. They all do that sort of thing in the park. They're all fit. What thing in it's the park? It's a place where black hair... I mean, when they come here, they take pi pictures of people with ginger hair, don't they? Because they don't get them over there. Get them. That's what I'm saying. So calm down. <laughs> so you're saying that Bruce Lee... The most famous Chinese movie star of all they time. They can't tell him apart. <laughs> other <laughs> other tri members would. How are they? I mean, how are they going about the business at all? I yeah. mean, what I'm saying is, how <laughs> do they, they even realise? Yeah, that, that, that was the guy. What do they have to do? Wear numbers in? You know, because there's 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 a billion. No, but of when, them. You, when you know them, then you know. So what? Oh, I see. They can tell each other apart, can they? Well, they got signals. <laughs> I, this is amazing, isn't That's it? How you got away with Simon, it. Simon, which one are you? Just raise your hand, Simon. <laughs> Chang, which one's Chang? Chang, good. Yeah. Oh, it what must idiots. be murder, mustn't it? It must. Just that can be the only people thing. going into the wrong houses all the time, <laughs> getting off with their mates' wives. Exactly. Yeah. It must be a nightmare. Then. It must be a nightmare. Um, this, I can't, he, please don't complain. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I'm really sorry to anyone. Uh, he honestly does not know what he's saying. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Yeah, but what I'm saying is... Go on. He keeps going. I don't think I am offending anyone. <laughs> okay. I Fine, highly that's doubt right, you then. are. And you know that I wouldn't want to do that. No, before, I know you don't. Oh, no. I swore oh, I know. Radio, I said, right, if you got kids in the car, turn your radio down. <laughs> So before you make any so potentially cute. racist remarks, just point out if you are listening and you might be Oriental. Yeah. Please don't take offence. Or go... Or, or. You know what I mean. So yeah. So what, what was this other dead person? Not... 
Can't play a record. Ricky's having a heart attack. <laughs> Well, the music of tomorrow is here. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. XF, XF, That's XF been some sort of muck up with the post. <laughs> um, Rick, a lot of the times when I've played uh, Hip Hop Hooray, my uh, hip hop track of the week, yeah. you've sort of scoffed, you've thought that maybe I don't have credibility amongst the hip hop fraternity. No, it's just the way you dance. Proper Eminem. Well, it's merely the way situation. you dance that, that worries me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. people can't see it. Really. Oh, we saw it. We saw it on the lip sync battle. We saw it with him and Christina Aguilera with him on those, like, crotchless pants. I don't know what the hell they were, but oh my god, we saw it. We wish we didn't. We wish we could erase that, but we saw it. And it's sort of like, imagine if Mr. Bean thought he was in D12. You know what I mean? It's, it's that sort of, and I don't diss you. I mean, I, I know you're, you're, you're a hip-hop appreciator. You know, I wouldn't expect man. you to diss me. <laughs> or my black queen. Um, but uh, the point is that I just uh, there's a little something that Carl's got on tape for you that I think might change your opinion of my uh, whole hip hop credibility. Oh no! Um, now I've told you in the past. Not you know, video I, tape, is it? Not at all. Not at all. Actually, oh. Carl, just play it. Just play it. Yo, one, two, one, two, we are the dilated people. Oh, Chilling oh, on oh, hip hop parade. That's right. With Steve Merchant, y'all, XFM 104.9. That is awesome. LA to London, dilated people expanding them all day. Now, oh, you've got that How about that. that? Come. No, it was just when I was hanging out with my homies. No, you did. You did, you, did they come <laughs> in the week? They were in the week, I think, and somebody got them to do it for them. Yeah, no, that was when I was just I was just hanging in the crib with them. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I was that's just very, with them, that's and, very uh, nice. Of them. And, the, and the guys just put just laid down some beats for me. Sure. Yeah. You know, just laid down some vocals, and, uh, and I gave them max respect for it. You know, and the place was mad deep with girls at the time. I assume you're going to play dilated pieces <laughs> this week. Well, well, at least there was one. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Let's play it. Carl. That's very good. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. Let's play it. Carl. That's very good. That's very good. Hip hop parade. Respect, guys. Cheers very much. Add it here. Yeah, yeah guys, just Max in there. Lovely. Good to hear from them. Good to hear from the boys. <laughs> but probably, I'll probably be heading over to LA NYPD and just, uh, just you know, chilling with them. Sometimes. I'd love them to meet you. You don't really laugh. They, I'd I, love them to meet you. We would hang out. I know all the the jokes. It's like a there. thing they do on. Um, MTV or H, we're like being dilated peoples, and yeah. they come and they make us three look yeah, like, like a rap people. group. Wouldn't that be great? Listen, I told you before, I've always remembered the words of, um, of Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah. Bitch is a bitch and a hoe is a hoe, but if a man be acting like a bitch, he's a bitch ass homie. All yeah. Right? Those, sure. those are the words from sure. the street. I would, uh, it's, it'd be like you, you two had won a competition or something, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that. I just don't think you can, uh, you can believe it that I'd just be hanging out, you know, with sort of like in the crib. People of courage, and you get a chance to meet your. Favourite? It would be amazing, wouldn't it? Listen, we were talking earlier about uh, the fact that um, Bruce Lee, and it's a well-known fact, yeah. he faked his own death so he could continue his um, undercover police work, sure. as opposed to being... Because no one would, yeah, he doesn't no look different to anyone else. But I was talking to someone as well recently who, um, utterly convinced, and you get this quite a lot, don't you, especially Americans, that uh, Elvis Presley's still alive. Yeah. And I think, wasn't there some statistic, like, more people believed Elvis was alive than thought than believed evolution, was that right? Yes. Something like that? No, 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 no. Wow. Um, no, it's something worse than that. Worse? It's... Never heard of that one, though, before. It could either. be something. It was something like that. It's something like, I don't know, it's something like 42% of Americans yeah. believe that Elvis Presley has faked his own death and is alive. Right. Yeah. And there's this whole book that's been written about it, because, um, Carl, you might be interested in this. I know you're always fascinated by things that have been written down and therefore a gospel. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and you don't have to revise yourself. You just learn off <laughs> exactly. Ian Wright. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently, um, the reason that Elvis is still alive um, is that there's a number of uh, sort of pieces of evidence. One is that no, none of his family could agree which colour pajamas he was wearing when he died. That's yeah. evidence, apparently. Apparently, um, you know, he was an honorary member of the FBI. Well, apparently, his signature appears on FBI documents well into the 80s, long after he should have died. Um, apparently, no one can agree. There were sums of money. A lot that of, only yeah, a lot of fat people in dungarees have seen him. Yeah. There's a number of there's sums of money which apparently only he could have given authority to have transferred to other bank accounts. They've moved. Yeah. So this is all evidence that Elvis is still alive. Mm. And um, a lot of people, I was talking to this guy and he was saying, yeah, well, of course, the thing is, he, he, the pressures of fame were too much for him. That he faked his own death so that he, he no longer had to be this, this huge icon. You know, he could live an ordinary life. And my query has always been this. If Elvis faked his own death, do you think he, the, the method he'd have chosen is to have shat himself to death whilst on the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, but because he picked that, nobody will doubt it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Elvis went to the FBI. Yeah. Okay, whoa, 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 ouch. Wait. Carl has something of a point. I have heard this so many times. An 
actually, apparently, my father has tested this. Oh my god, I gotta drop the pencil. I'm, I'm, I'm just hitting everything. But, um, tested this out that apparently when you lie about something, if it is embarrassing, it is more believable, okay? That's just the way that the psychology of that goes. And apparently, if you are speeding and you get pulled over by the cops and you say and again I believe my father has done this and it worked for him if you say oh my god officer I am so sorry it's just that I am shitting myself and I need to go to the bathroom immediately they will let you off because that sounds believable who would lie about that who who would I mean it's so embarrassing, and the only way you could admit it is if it was true. There's some stupid psychology to that, and uh, my dad tried, and it worked for him. <laughs> so I always have that in the back of my mind when I'm speeding, <laughs> which is never, because I drive responsibly. Yeah, well, exactly. So what we're saying, Carl, is that there was lots of methods open to him, you know what I mean? It's all like, he didn't go to his, his, his secret reason go, oh, I'm afraid I want to, I want to fake my own death. I mean, and they yeah. go, yeah, that, that. <laughs> yeah. And what, hey, what, what methods have you got? I like to be found, shit myself down the toilet. You like to do what? I want to be a big fat mother f on yeah. the toilet, just shit myself to death. Right, just on my ankles. No, that, that, that obviously is a good idea. I'm just wondering if there's maybe something a little bit more glamorous mm. for your favourite death. I mean, you could take a bullet for the president. <laughs> what? And shit all over. <laughs> no, 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 How the no, hell no, do you fake that? No, you just you just take a bullet for him, or you could. There has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be? There has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be crap involved? That way, it's believable. Make it happen. Yeah, it's what do you probably, say? I want this way. Oh, make it happen. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the <laughs> car head in hand. Look. Yeah, he's worried about the things we say. Yeah. Jeez. We haven't offended 1.2 billion people. Yeah. <laughs> a, a bit of the planet. <laughs> so, Carl, what do you make of it then? Do you, are you what convinced? Say? Elvis is still alive. Um, is am I getting mixed up with someone else? <laughs> Because all like, Elvis, no, no, all no. Elvises look alike. Because that, now that is true. A lot of Elvises do look alike. That's that, safe. On his gravestone, yeah. didn't they get his name wrong, or is that his brother? Who's his brother? Um, <laughs> Aaron. That's his middle name. Yeah. You're not an Elvis um, kind of expert, are you? Hold on. Was Elvis was uh, wasn't Elvis a, one of a twin that yeah, died? That died, and I'm sure they got his name wrong on a grave or something. Or something. Oh, I don't know. But that's so. That's consequently, that's proof he's still alive. No, uh, the thing with the uh, still alive thing, um, like I say, he picked that awkward death because nobody would be saying, "Hang on a minute," going round upsetting the family, wanting to talk about it because they'd be embarrassed to be saying, you know, we, he was found sort of yeah in a pile of mess, weighing twenty five stone. Yeah. yeah. So because you notice he also expanded to a huge size as well, so he was just a huge fat blob of a man. He also did that to, to add, you know, extra. To so the glamour. I, I don't quite understand all this these people who fake the deaths because well a lot of them don't work. a lot of them don't Carl this is what Thank this you, is what in a roundabout way we're saying we're saying that a lot of people that say people fake that they well, didn't who, who like else, Bruce Lee and uh, James Dean and Elvis Presley we're saying Michael they Jackson. didn't fake no, the he, deaths he, he oh, did but die, this is he? old his head come off didn't he? <laughs> Fire God. who's this James Dean <laughs> his head came off <laughs> what <laughs> I just start music what there's so a casual that goes too. Out. The Smiths, XFM 104.9, nearly through. Absolutely. Two hours of chat, great music. Bloody good music. Carl, of course. Speaking yeah, before he <laughs> thinks. <laughs> By the way, you know when he was talking about Mowgli. You know he was going to talk about Mowgli, and you said, oh, "What are the Gremlins called?" Yeah. You were you thinking of Ah oh, Mugwai, Mugwai? Yeah, mm. but they to were still fair, they were they, they were, were called Gremlins. Gremlins. Yeah. Yeah, it was, but, yeah. Well, I know what you're thinking. I know, to be fair. But my girlfriend won't be listening now, so <laughs> she'll still think I'm a bit daft. She <laughs> ne how could, why, why would she ever think that? How long have you been going out with her? About eight years. Well, then, wh why would she ever think you're daft? That's the only stupid thing you've ever said, the, the Mogwai thing. Why would she ever think she's going <laughs> out with a, to be honest, mm. a retard? I, I think um, I think it's a very beautiful relationship you must have, you know, because it's odd. Like, I mean, she's a professional journalist or whatever, yeah. you know, and she works for, is it uh, Radio 5 or something? BBC Sport. BBC TV. Sport. So and you're a man who never even uh, got her Her English is quite good. Her, is, her, is English quite good, her? Really good. Is yeah? <laughs> so, is English and did she good do her, her exams? Yeah. She's quite bright. Sure. So what do you bring to the relationship? <laughs>
DIYs. I, th I think uh, take the pressure off her. <laughs> take the pressure off her. Uh, How? To do what? Yeah. You know, like when she's had a stressful day and she comes home and talks to me. I think. Yeah. You would relax me, and that's the truth. I, 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 honestly, but you know. Hey. Can't... Every time I've ever been in a bad mood and I watched either an idiot abroad or anything Carl Pilkin, I've immediately felt better. So. He does have that effect. Oh, you can just he can just go. Wow, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't. He don't get stressed. He sits in his little booth now. He doesn't talk to anyone. His little sound booth all the week. And you just you just you're in your own little world, aren't you? Well, it's interesting because I wonder sometimes what your aspirations are. I was thinking this. I was watching uh, a repeat of Family Fortunes on uh, Challenge TV last night, and it was sort of mid eighties one. And I don't know if it's still the case, but it was the aspirations of the contestants. It was yeah. so kind of. It was like, and what's your hobby? Well, you know, um, I like to go out when it's nice. Weather and oh. stay in. Well, if you, not. if you win two thousand pounds, you'd probably be going but out. But nice weather is the nice time to die. What are you talking about going out? I mean, what? Well, it's nice, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, "Well, and I, you know, I, I sometimes like to watch TV, you know." And I was thinking, "Wow, you know, man, you've really got some incredible but what, dreams." But what, 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 what it's I, just like that. I'm, you're just waiting to die, aren't what, you? That's what all I you're... feel sorry for. Right? Two things. Um, you know, in like stars in their <laughs> eyes, and you get a little fellow, and he and he's gutting fish. In a Wait, I can't. That's too much for me to read and process. Okay. Sound like interesting. Okay, that's cool. I've never heard of that. Was brilliant. Cool. He looks very Freddy. Sort of factory that in Bolton, funny. and he comes on, and he does, you know, something like Bobby Darren. Okay, and he's and and Matthew Kelly comes out after as well. I don't think you'll be going back to the fish factory. You will. <laughs> you will be going back. You will. Straight back. Yeah. Mate. Yeah. Let's yeah. think of don't all the stars in the rise, Kelly. Because that's a nasty thing to do. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, trying to think of all the uh, stars in the rise contestants that have gone on to great things. What happened to that little fella that looked like the, the little Alsatian puppy that did Christopher? He looks a bit like Christopher. He looked like he, li he had problems. Well, I yeah. Now what was it? Is Ian Moore? His name was. Now he now he, he was. Uh, well, like, it's interesting. My friend bought me as an ironic gift for my birthday. He bought me the uh, live video of Ian Moore. Um, you'll be pleased to know that Lady Red was on there among a number of other hits. Um, but it was it was, it was called, It had a picture of Ian on the front. It said Ian Moore naturally. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was like, too big for him as well. Of course. It was ludicrous, but I don't know if that meant Ian Moore naturally, like we all know who this guy is, it's Ian Moore. Yeah. Or was it Ian Moore, he's no longer being Christa Burr, he's just natural. What did he sound like when he wasn't being Christa Burr? Christa Burr. Ah. Did he <laughs> yeah. really? Because he met him, didn't he? He met. Yeah. Well, Christa Burr, I think Christa Burr couldn't wait to get back on the telly. Well, the thing is, I think I think Ian Moore is actually earning more than Christa Burr now. <laughs> I think. They could have got Christa Burr on there. Yeah, you, as get, a you can get Christa Burr for £1,000, but Ian Moore's going up for 1200 now, <laughs> just to the PA to, you know, adapt. But he does lady mate, there's all the hits. He does, don't pay the ferryman. Yeah. Don't even set a price. <laughs> There's all those. Interestingly, I saw him interviewed once, and uh, Lady in Red's not his favourite song. You're joking. It's bizarre, isn't but it? But he was only going to play that if, um, uh, it was the, uh, fat, uh, ginger. <sighs> what? Like, Sarah Ferguson. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was only if she was wearing some red. He was only going to play that when? It, yeah, well, it, it was a live thing, and he was only going to play that if she was wearing red or something. Right. Didn't her freckles count? That's beautiful. No, so it, she had, luckily she had a red, that must have clashed with her a bit. Yeah. A red scarf on on her face. And the highlights in face. your hair that catch the light. Yeah. Such a beautiful lyric. Never seen look as lovely as did uh, The thing is, right, he, he misses a rhyme there. He goes, uh, I'm going to ask you to uh, dance. Looking for a little romance. romance. Now he could have yeah. said dance, couldn't yeah. he? I, uh, I've met a man once in a, in a bar. I can't remember what song I heard the other day and the first time I saw the lyrics and I was so upset of exactly that. When, when they missed the chance to rhyme and it would have sounded so much better and they didn't in any song. Just, I can't remember what song it was the other day, but I was like, is that the word? I mean, that sucks. <laughs> of all the things that they could have put to rhyme. But, um, yeah, lost opportunities. That, that's infuriating. I was talking to him for some reason. I, I was annoyed by him. I was wound up by him. And um, I said that I'd written Lady in Red, and uh, I never got any money for it, because I found that he was like a music lawyer. And he went, well, give me a call. I'll investigate that. <laughs> and he was actually going to do it for me. I, was, I love the idea of that. Just, <laughs> Why did you say that? Really bored, and I didn't like him much. And I was just, and I thought that was... Um, that Why did you choose change. Lady in Red, though? Because I think I was singing it with a friend of mine, and sure. he came over and went, oh, good voice. And I went, yeah, I wrote this. What pub is this? <laughs> it was North. Is it? Yeah. 
Never seen looking so lovely as you did tonight. So, yeah, um, anyway, those, that's enough of my Christopher <laughs> anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, pretty much the end of the show. Uh, and uh, it is, it's been a great, it's been a great show. Hang on, have it I got time for a song been. for the lovers, or have I missed that? No. If, if you give it me Chris now. Ralph. Yeah, what are you gonna play? What are you gonna play? What, are you gonna play a song now and then we've got time for it afterwards? No, you'll have to give it me Yeah. Right oh, I better now. dig it out. Well, can, what, can you keep what, yeah, what, what have you chosen? I'll, I'll keep it going. Well, um, a friend of mine who keeps making me little compilations has stuck on an old Tom Waits track, which is uh, from his first album, one that I've not listened to for a while. Brilliant. listen to it, it's absolutely dying. Brilliant, brilliant. Can anyone hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah. He's just getting out of his bag now because we were we weren't prepared for this. We we sort of ran out of time. We're having such a great time with the philosophy of Carl. What do you, what do you fancy doing anyway for, with your future? Me? You know, I'm just I'm just gonna tell you now. You know we're still on air, don't you? <laughs> Before it gets too casual. You know we are still broadcasting yeah, yeah. to the capital. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you fancy doing with your future? Well, Steve? once I've made all that money from uh, suing Christa Burr, <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, you know, my future. I'm living my future, and I wanted to have some good mates like yourself and Ricky. Yeah. You know, Carla wanted to be on the radio. We're going to play great we're, songs. We're like the Three Musketeers, me, you, and see. We're, it's like we're like the original Rat Pack. We're, we're like Ocean's Eleven. I'm Sinatra. There you go. Yeah. Um, you're, you, you're Sammy Davis Jr. and you're what's his name, D Martin, aren't you? Yeah, or Joey Lawrence. What's his name? Joey Lawrence, not Joey Lawrence. Joey Bishop. Joey Deacon. Joey Deacon. <laughs> My dad said the ending on the old one's better than the new one. <laughs> <laughs> we should definitely get your dad in, man. That would be just oh, dynamite. Yes, when should. people get tired of you, we've got, <laughs> we've got the whole Pilkington family <laughs> yeah. to do The whole gene pool. Have you seen it? No. Carl, have we got time for this now, really, what, mate? What track? <laughs> to be fair. What? Okay, it's track number one. Now, interesting thing about shoddy. Tom Waits is that, um, this is his, from his first album, and he doesn't sound like that kind of gruff, you know, lived-in guy that he wants to be. He doesn't sound something of a crooner. Yeah. But this is a track called Old 55, which bizarrely, I think, might have been covered by the, um, the Eagles. But anyway, it's, I think it's a really no lovely track, really beautiful track. I'll see you next week. And we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Carl. See ya. See you guys. Say sorry. For what? For if you offended anyone. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry, I'm saying I'm guilty. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> oh, that was great. Thank you so much, Rusty. That was awesome. And I love that I was actually right that it was a very Carl heavy episode. Oh my God, what joy these, they, they just bring me so much joy. I love it so much. They're so freaking funny. And his perspective of the world is just so unpredictable and I just adore it. It's, it's great. Oh man. That put me in a great mood. <laughs> I love them. <sighs> That's just, I, I gotta go do stuff, but that was just, that was fun on a bun, man. I really enjoyed it, and again, I love how Carl Heavy it was. And I also, I, I, it's, he's still very low compared to everybody else, and I think it's funny. Can't wait to him actually be, you know, on par with them, and uh, I wonder if they do. I imagine they made such a big deal out of it that they do keep up with his uh, his certificate score or whatever the hell the test was or the GEC or whatever the letters are. But um, damn, that was fun. Anyway, guys, I am off to do stuff and things. Love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for being here. Thank you for clicking on me. Hope you have a wonderful whatever you're off to do. See you soon. Toodles. Toodles.